Hi, welcome to the part 2 of this video series. We are looking at AZ400 real exam questions. Please subscribe to my channel if, if you have not done it yet. This channel is totally focused on helping you clear the cloud certifications. For previous questions, you can refer part 1. Let's jump in to the questions. Question 5. You can pause and read and come back. So you have a GitHub repository and the question is saying that you need to display the commit status of the repository on Azure boards. Now what is Azure board? See primarily this is used to plan, track and discuss work. If you know you are on a agile project you must have heard about tools like confluence which is used to manage the work and collaborate okay see in the agile world storyboards are a key it whatever you use maybe jira or confluence so such tools are used to manage the work and create storyboards it's like just like you know in an excel if you have five activities planned you can create a uh, story cards using these tools and then track it to closures you can assign them owners start date end dates dependencies so primarily these three things is what is uh, provided by these storyboards to manage there are other fields as well but these are some key fields and the question is asking about commit status of the repository so commit is similar to database commits where you put in some transactions in case of github it's the code which is getting committed inside the github repository so let's scan through the options um, the first option uh, looks stupid yeah so the reason being it is an authentication solution there is no mention of authentication here so A is grossly wrong what does MFA do if you are logging in using your active directory username and password that's one step it will add one more step multi-factor authentication one more step like an otp via sms let's look at b see the second one the option b is talking about pipelines app uh, so it is saying you add the pipeline app to the github repository we can do that but the purpose of adding this is so that your code can be pushed okay or you can do a pull from the repository you can do a pull here you can do a pull to azure okay it has nothing to do with azure boards so here this one is for push pull to repository let's look at c c looks apt because you will have to add the boards app to the repository see this write-up explains how these two products can integrate that is azure boards with github projects so this is the correct option option d says create a github action in github so action is used to avoid or reduce repetitive codes if you see this documentation an action can pull your git repository from github set the correct tool chain so it sets the flow and you can set up the authentication to the cloud provider so primarily it is used for code reusability if github already has code you can pull that up you can reduce uh, code rewrite so this is the right answer let's look at question 7 so this is the question you can pause this video read it carefully and come back in a nutshell this question is about integrating azure pipelines with teams teams means microsoft teams and how do you integrate you actually install azure pipeline on teams so this is how you put azure pipeline app on microsoft teams 
so the question says they have done that now there is an azure devops organization named contso so there is an organization named contso and has say one project project one okay ignore this project two question says it has only one project project one so what is the pain point here and what is required is we need to receive events about failed builds in teams we want failed build alerts now let's scan through the options the first one this one what it is doing is it is uh, running pipeline for the project if we run this command that means it is going to monitor all pipelines in project one that means it is used for pipeline monitoring similarly we have option c which is going to it will be useful in our use case here if you want failed builds so i'll show you the part of the documentation which says c is correct so you can read this highlighted part to get notified when builds fail okay when builds fail and this is what helps you do that once you run that command you can add a subscription and then you can select this setting like you want notifications for failed builds you can put you can select this filter and you will get alerts so c is correct let's look at option b b says to publish build artifacts add this task to project 1 in this project 1 so this option is wrong because if you see the documentation this task has been deprecated and they are saying instead of that use pipeline artifact task so this is wrong because this service or this task has been deprecated let's look at d it talks about enable continuous integration for project one this project see this is a setting okay you can enable continuous integration this is how you enable it but what happens here is if you enable it then a, if it will cause the build to trigger when any change is pushed to the main branch of the github repository so basically it is used for code push we do not have a use case for code push the you this use case is talking about events for failed builds so d is wrong we will lock our answer as option c and move forward if you look at question 8 now this is the question you have an organization devops organization named contoso but this time you need to receive notifications when work items are updated see since we have to you know send notifications for work items which are updated a will not work see a why a is used is it in a nutshell it runs tasks on other services for example if a new work has been added you want to create a card story card in trello this trello is primarily used for agile projects to create and manage story cards option b connector so this looks correct for this use case See, these connectors are available for all of these products and what it does is it enables you to get all your content tools conversions in team workspace in one place but i would like to highlight one key problem when a new channel message is added the trigger only fires when root messages are added in the channel so this looks correct so c primarily is used suppose you are working for infosys okay and 
uh, you are hiring contractors say hypothetically these contractors work for tech mahindra they are tech mahindra employees and you want to have a team meeting with them they are not infosys employees but these are external people for you but uh, by configuring external access you can have that meeting with unknown or external people but it will not fit in this use case so c is wrong d talks about adding a channel see in teams what is channel used for for example you are in a it department or finance department you can have your own channel dedicated to the finance department or if you are working on a project you can have a channel dedicated to a project if you see schools they use teams for online classes and they have channels for each class like standard 6a 6b 6c each division also they have channels we do not have that use case so d is wrong and e talks about installing an extension so if you want to add new features then we use extension as common sense the word extension itself means you are extending something you already have something and you are extending for example you already have a bedroom and you are extending it further to add a balcony or a patio to it see if you see this example the documentation they are adding an extension they are browsing the marketplace and they searched for code search and then they are adding it to the organization here the organization name is fabricam fiber this is how they add extensions so this is our final answer option b is the final answer this brings us to the end of part 2 please subscribe to my channel i would be posting more parts of this series stay tuned and please like my videos if you think these are adding values any constructive comment is welcome see you in the next part